In sixth grade, I made my first diorama. I think it was five Native American tribes in the upstate New York region. The Mohawks just had the coolest name, so I made my little popsicle stick Mohawk Village in Mrs. Tish's sixth grade class. I probably took the job really seriously at the time. <laughs> hands. Isn't that disgusting? I like purple, with all kinds of cuts on them. Hopefully in an hour or two that's gonna look a little better. Jeez. Whew. Dioramas were a really big part of our production here at the Field Museum for decades and decades. A lot of men and a lot of women develop these incredible works of art that tell these tremendous stories. The importance of dioramas is as strong as ever. Our intentions are to put this in the very first room of the new China Hall, so it's really going to set the stage for the growth of Chinese civilization. For five years, I've been waiting for an oil painting job to come up at the Field Museum. So with the dioramas, that finally happened. Ten months sounds like a lot of time, but the months will go very quickly. The first step is to understand the content, so I meet with Libby to understand what the story is going to be. He and I are having lots of conversations about how to take the archaeological information from the curators and turn it into something that feels alive and visually arresting. What we're hoping to do with this diorama is take people back in time into a Longshan settlement from the late Neolithic. And we want to show the different ways that people were living within that community. We also want to flash people forward to the present day and on the other side of the diorama, we want to be showing that same settlement being excavated. And this is based on real work that's happening in China today. And some of our curators and former curators are part of that work. For the landscapes, we were lucky that there's lots of beautiful images of Shandong province and the Shandong peninsula. Since Gary and Linda's work, so much of it is walking miles and miles of the land doing these regional surveys. They had awesome photographs. Google Earth, of all things, gives us a lot of material to work with. Our curators were awesome about getting photographs of what the equipment would look like. So what do the buckets look like? What does a total station look like if you're going to show them surveying? There are some cool illustrations that people have done of what they think these houses look like, but so much of what we see in the site reports is really just dots for where post holes are and dashed lines for where the circumference of a house is. I think it really took a lot of imagination for them to, to figure out what this scene would look like. And some of it is guesswork. We didn't necessarily have a visual. Um, the tops of the houses, no one, that material isn't preserved. We had to kind of guess with what we think that would be. An educated guess, but still a guess. It can be surprising the things that we have conversations about to create a diorama. We recently had a very in-depth conversation about soil. 
and making sure that the dirt in the diorama match the region that Gary does his research in. I was given a Munsell color chart, which is something that geologists use to document the color of the soil, and they take this to different archaeological sites. It's really important that we use it because the color has to match the landform. It's, I mean, it's just got to. All right, so I come back in 24 hours, and hopefully that worked. These little uh, skeletons that are going to be in the, the burial scene. So the landform that I just made is an archaeological dig site, and uh, they're unearthing these skeletons. They bury these people in the foundations of their houses. All right, I think that's good. Yes, that is good. I'm just going to glue this guy down in here. Buried a skeleton. We'll actually have some of our staff members in the diorama. So the curators are being turned into miniature versions of themselves. Aaron is working on a Gary figurine, one of our lead curators. Gary just got back from the field and threw us a curveball. I started to sculpt Gary, who has this very uh, recognizable mustache. It's symbolic of Gary. And right as I started carving him, he came to work and he didn't have the mustache anymore. That did throw us a little bit of a curveball, but we definitely had to keep that mustache on him. I think my favorite part of this whole thing is really just working with the different anthropologists and archaeologists on the team here. There's a beat up gray VW bug that Gary rides around in when he's out in China. So um, we got to make that thing silver, put a Chinese license plate on it. side. That's going to fit. All right. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Susan, I think, uh, I think we're all right. Not bad at all. No. Gap here is looking good. Everything lines up. It's perfect with the back painting. And uh, look at that. It's better than better than we could have hoped for. I mean, it's just as good as we could have hoped for. Good. This is big. It's like sending your kid off to college for the first time. Okay.
know I'm proud of it. I know our team is proud of it. I know everybody at the museum is proud of not only this diorama, but the whole Hall of China. <laughs>